we've had a look at how to create a requirements list, how to use that requirements list to create the screens, how to use the screens to get a list of events, and in the previous video we looked at creating the outline of the code for those events. Now we're going to look at coding those events. Well, the events themselves fall into two categories. The first category of events just takes the user from one form to another. So button data entry will take the user from the main menu to the data entry form. Button data retrieval will take the user from the main menu to the data retrieval form. Button cancel will take the user from the data entry form back to the main menu and button main menu will take the user from the data retrieval form back to the main menu. So these four are all doing the same sort of thing. But the other three events are different. Form data entry load allows the user to specify the year and the Grand Prix name. Button save data will save the data to a file. And button find race will read a file for the user and display the results. So let's have a look at the first four events. Here's the button data entry click event. Notice that we're starting with event, button data entry click is the name, and the first line here with the two slashes in front is a comment that tells us what this event is doing. That's useful later not so much for us, we wrote the program, but it's useful for others who follow on. And that sort of thinking is the professional approach. Amateurs would leave the comments out. Professionals see the comments as absolutely necessary. So this event will take the user to the form data entry. Now if you're moving from one form to another, you need to hide the form you're on and then show the form that you need to show now. So hide me, me is always the current form, hide me will hide the main menu and show the data entry form. So this little event turns out to be quite simple. The next event is in the same format. The event button data entry retrieval click will take the user to the form data retrieval. So again, it's going to hide the main menu form and then show the data retrieval form. Similarly, button cancel will take the user to the form main menu. So it will hide, in this case, the data entry form and then show the main menu form. And likewise, the button main menu click will take the user from the data retrieval form to the form main menu. Hide me will hide the data retrieval form and show main menu takes us back to where we started. These four events are all of a similar format. But now we move on to the main things. Button data entry load is, sorry, form data entry load is the event that allows us to specify both the year and the Grand Prix name. But since that, is, that data is needed in several events, if we put it in the form data entry load, then that information isn't visible in any of the other events. So we've got to define these variables outside the event to make them visible to the other events. That's called scope, and we covered that earlier too. Now, we've got define year as text, and you'll notice that I've spelt year incorrectly, and I've defined it as text. Well, year is sometimes referred to as a programming command in some languages. So I've purposefully misspelt it. It's one of those little tricks of the trade that we discussed earlier. But how come year isn't as integer? That's because we're not going to be doing any arithmetic with year. We're going to be using it as part of a file name. 
So we're going to define year, spelt with two E's, as text. And then we're going to define Grand Prix as text as well. That's just the name of the Grand Prix. So that information, when it's entered, will be visible to all events because it's defined outside any particular one. Now we come to the event itself, form data entry load. And this event will ask the user for the year and the name of the Grand Prix. So for that we have year equals input in which year was the Grand Prix. That information will go into the memory location year the next line asks the user for the name of the Grand Prix and that information will go into the variable Grand Prix, the variable being a memory location as well. So that event just takes data in. The next two events look at how we handle files and before we get on to that you need to know a little bit of theory. You see File handling is not as simple as you might imagine. Just think of a pipe joining your computer to a file. That's the thick black line. That pipe can have bits flowing down it. And the bits can either flow from your computer to the file. So that's output from your computer to the file. Or can be input, input from the file to your computer. You need to define that pipe. That pipe has to exist before the data can flow. And that concept is absolutely vital in all programming languages. So now with that bit of theory in place, let's have a look at the code for the first event, the button Save Data Click. Here we start off with a comment again, save the data to a text file. Now what we're going to do is to define a variable called file. Now you'll notice that that's misspelt too because file is a reserved word in most languages. So we're going to define file as text and we're going to say that what's in file is the year plus the Grand Prix name plus dot txt. So if in the previous event the user had entered 2011 and Monaco, the file name would be 2011 Monaco dot txt. That's the name of the file. Now we can get on to the file handling. Every file must be opened and closed. That's obligatory in all languages. So open the file first, and we're going to open file for output. File is that pipe that we discussed. And what are we going to do? Well, we're going to output the text in driver 1, which is the field on the form. We're going to add a little squiggly line, and then we're going to add the name of the team first team. And we're going to output that to file. So it looks pretty similar to the output commands that you've seen in other videos. The first line will take the name of the driver that won, add a squiggly line, add the name of the team that driver drove for, and write that out to the file. So the file would be 2011monaco.txt for example. And we would do that for each of the text boxes on that data entry form. So the next out line would be output txt driver 2 plus squiggly line plus txt team 2 comma file. And the one after that would do the one for 3 and so on all the way down to output txt driver 10 plus squiggly line plus team 10 comma file. So that would write out 10 lines of text to file. Then we close file so the computer knows that it can now put that pipe away and close the event. That file now exists 
in the same directory as the program. And we can now move on to the final event. Button Find Race Click. Now, whilst this is going to look a little more complicated, it's in fact really quite easy. If you imagine that file on the disk, well, first of all, we've got to define our pipe. So define file as text equals year plus Grand Prix plus dot txt is the same as in the previous event. This is our pipe. We now have to read the text in. And that's going into a place that I'm going to call record. But since record exists as a, a defined name in some languages, I'm going to spell it with a K. So record is just going to be a line of text. And then, because I'm going to go round each line in the file, and I happen to know that there are ten lines, I'm going to have a counted loop. So I'm going to need a counter. So I'm going to have define CNTR, mainly because I can't spell counter, as integer. Now we use the same logic as in the previous event. We have to open the file. In other words, we have to create that connection pipe between the computer and the file. And then we have to close it at the end. So open file for input. Ah, input, the information is coming from the file to our program. It's being input into the program. And what are we going to get? Well, we're going to count from 1 to 10 using counter. That means we're going to go round this loop ten times. So this bit of the loop is going to do record equals input from file. So that will just get the first line of text from file. And take that text and put it in the memory location record. Now we've got that information into our program, we can output it. So we're going to output record plus a carriage return line feed. That's necessary in almost all languages to make sure that we don't get everything on one line. In other words, make sure you do a, an enter after you've written the record. And where are we going to write this piece of information? Well, we're going to write it to LBL race result. LBL race result was that area on the screen that's going to show the user the results from the Grand Prix. Loop just sends us back to counting from and makes counter one bigger than it was before. So it'll start off first time with counter being one, read in the record, output record one, then it'll make counter two, read in the second record, and output that to label race result, and so on round, until it's done all 10. And when it's done all 10, we've got to remember to put that pipe away. So that's the close file. Close file makes sure that everything is neat and tidy, and the computer doesn't have open file connections all over the place. It eats up memory, and it's also very insecure. We can then end the event, and everybody's happy. We've now defined all the code for our program Formula One. And it wasn't as complicated as you might imagine.